Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this second event of Consolf webinars series. I'm Alessandro Palmas, and I will show you today how to use Consolf Cloud Simulation Platform to perform some analysis in the fluid dynamics and structural analysis field with our platform in the valve sector. I just want to remember you that if you log in with your Google account, you will be able to ask questions in the live chat at the end of the presentation. So first, few words about Consolf. We are based in Milan, in Italy, and we have three different location, operative location in Italy too, in the northern part and in Sardinia. We also have activated a distribution network worldwide that at the moment counts on a branch in South Korea, one in China, another one in Croatia, and also we are activating other branches in the Americas. As you can see here, the webinars started last week with the HVAC presentation on April the 7th and we'll continue in April and May with pumps, wind tunnels and building simulation. The HVAC presentation is available in our website on the dedicated page where the YouTube video is available for everyone. Here there, there are our references if you need any additional information, if you want to contact us, you can write to our mail address info at consoft.com. This is a summary of our activities. Our business is mainly based on simulation platform accessible at app.consoft.com. Our platform allows you to perform fluid dynamics and pretty soon, in fact, from starting next week, structural analysis too. We also have a cloud computing service where we provide computing power and software in a paper user approach. We give our customers the access to a, a modern cloud computing environment where they can find all major free and GPL licensed softwares, as well as also licensed, licensed software as well. But they have to, to provide their own license first. Finally, we also perform engineering consulting. In fact, we help our customer in the optimization and integration of simulation technology in their design process. So let's start to focus on our simulation that we are going to perform today, that is a valve simulation. You can see in this slide, this, <clears throat> the, the, the model of the valve on the left, on the, on the right part, and this is the, the shape we are going to simulate in our platform. We will cover the entire simulation cycle, starting from geometry upload and then performing the meshing, the CFT analysis, and also some pro post-processing on, directly online. Why using virtual simulation is so important? You can perform a lot of evaluation in the very preliminary phase of your design. In fact, you can evaluate mass flow, pressure drops, velocity distribution, recirculation zones, as well as turbulence, depending on the design of your model. There are also other kind of analysis like structural performances in terms of maximum deformation and material stresses due to distributed and concentrated loads 
as well as very particular uh, estimation like damage due to impacts of solid particles dispersed in the flow. This can happen, for example, when you use your valve in an aggressive environment like water with sand dispersed in it, or in particular industrial application where there are solid particles in the flow. So now we can start our application and I will show you how to register to our platform and then to run the, your simulation. So this is our website. You can easily create your account clicking on the login section on the upper right corner. You will reach the My Account page where you can add your email and choose a password. So in this way, you will have your account created and then you can go to the store, select the cloud safety plans, and sign up for the welcome plan. It gives you free simulation, and it's automatically renewed every month. So in our case, we already have our account, so I can go to the my account page and log in and then start my simulation platform here you have two different tabs the dashboard and the simulation tab in the dashboard you can find a few infographics that show you important information about your account for example, here on the left, you have the pie showing you the remaining credits as well as the spent ones. On the top of the page, you have a summary of how many steps have you submitted while using the platform. And finally, on the, on the bar graph shows you the amount of credit spent for each of the last five simulations. Another important thing is that here on the left bottom corner, you have the user manual link and you can open it and take it as a reference in order to guide your simulation step by step. We will take a look at it in the later part of the presentation. So, in order to start a new case, we can just go to the simulation tab. And here we have three different screens. Uh, the first one is the creation of a new case. Second one is a selection of a previously run case. And finally, in the, in the bottom part, there is the case in progress, where all computation that are ongoing will be shown to you. As you can see, there is a select here where you can decide which kind of application you want to run. One of our main strengths is the possibility to provide our users with dedicated application. As you can see, there is a general CFD application, but also there are three particular applications in the field of oil and gas with the flow with particles, an HVAC simulation where you can perform H, um, CO extraction for parking locks, for, for example, or uh, the turbo machinery application where you can simulate uh, hydraulic pumps, for example. So we will use, for, for our webinar, we will use the general CFD application. We have just, in order to create the case, we just need to define a name 
And uh, in this case, we can use, for example, webinar valve. And hitting create, we will arrive to the first, very first step of our simulation that, as you can see here, is composed by five different steps that will we'll go through every one of them in the, in, the, in the following part of our webinar. If you want to edit the name, you can just click here and rename your case. And everything starts from a CAD model. So let's upload the model first. We can accept step files, I guess, and STL files. Our recommendation is to, to use, where possible, step files because they are the most robust, complete, and flexible ones. So let's start with our valve geometry. So here, the upload. And you will see on the right part the graphic window too that we show you the, the geometry. As you can see, this is the real valve geometry where you have your constraints here for the screws and all the valve. Today, we are going to simulate the flow inside this valve. And in order to do so, this is an important concept that is common to every flow simulation. You have to describe not the object, but the flow surrounding it or filling it. In this case, we have a valve, so we have an internal flow. We have to upload not the valve itself, but instead the fluid volume inside it. How can we obtain the fluid volume? It's a very simple operation can be, that can be performed from uh, for um, starting from the, your, your structure, your, your object, with the every major CAD manipulator. And it's, it is basically a Boolean subtraction. And you can, you can see, starting from a, a brick, you can just subtract this, this model, you will obtain your fluid model, your, your fluid volume. So now we already performed this operation and we can upload the fluid volume of our valve. And that is again a step five. So here it is. And this is our fluid volume. So first thing to notice sometimes your CAD models can be not placed on the origin of your axis. So you can have problems in terms of center of rotation that is set to be 0, 0, 0. In order to reset it and to place it whenever you need it, you have just to click, double click on the left mouse button on the, on the window, on the graphical window where you want to set the center of rotation. This way you can obtain what whatever you want in terms of rotation and center okay so this is the fluid model the fluid volume of our valve you as you can see you can highlight everything single surface that compose your step file for this simple simulation we are going to define the inlet, the outlet, and the walls in order to discover how is shaped the inside part of our valve. We can highlight a few surfaces and just hide them with this button. And this will show us the inside part of your valve. So we can just show every surface now and we can proceed in our geometry preparation. So first thing to do is to define our file unit. It's something that is defined on the CAD level. So here, the, the only thing we can, go, we can do is just take a look at the information of our file and discover its sizes. 
we can see here in x in x y z we have 172 to 90. so this um should uh, should make us think that the file is in millimeters and so this is our choice in the file units menu so we can proceed we have the second part of the geometry step where we need to define the flow type. We have, in this case, we have an internal flow. In other cases, let's say that you want to simulate an airplane or, or a car, you have to choose the external fluid. In this case, you, when you, you choose external, you can define your bounding box that surrounds your object. But in our case, it's an internal flow. So. The first one is the right choice. At this point, we have to complete the geometry step with a very important part. We need to define our boundaries. The boundaries are the zones of, the, of our model that behave in the same way in the, from the computational fluid dynamics point of view. In our case, we will have three different parts of our model. In fact, we have an inlet where the flow enters, an outlet where it exits, and there is finally the wall part, the solid boundaries that contains the flow. So, as you can see, this is a required part of, of our process. In fact, if you just hit submit at this point, the software warns you that you need to create boundaries or at least one containing the whole part of your geometry. So we can just cancel this submit and create our boundaries. We will have our flow entering from the Y uh, ax axis uh, here and exiting from here. So we can just start to define our boundaries and the first one is the inlet, we highlight the surface where the water enters and hit create boundary. We have to give the name here. And once this is, has been completed, the surface becomes dark and you cannot select it anymore. So you can just proceed and define the other boundary that is the outlet in this case. In the same way, so we have an inlet and an outlet. A summary of the boundaries already created is, you can see it clicking on Manage Boundaries button, and you have here the table showing you which boundary has been created. If you double click, you can edit name. You can hide your boundaries or show them again. At this point, we need to create the wall boundary. In order, you, we can proceed highlighting every single surface of our geometry, but you can do it quicker just selecting the select all option in the selection menu. This will select every single face of your geometry, but the one that are already enclosed in other boundaries. So this way you can create the remaining boundary and it is, it is the wall. At this point, we are ready to submit our job to our computational cloud. Once you submit your step, you will see your case in progress in your simulation tab. This operation, this geometry one, is very quick. It will take around a few seconds, I mean, around 30 to 60 seconds. And once it will be finished, we will see our case webinar valve here in the selection of cases select or, uh, as the first entry. And we will just click open to continue our simulation. And as I was saying, we have five different steps. This is the step-by-step -step approach we mentioned before. And now 
everything is ready, we can open the file and you will see the geometry step is over, we can proceed with our 2D meshing. The 2D meshing is a step where you will create your discretization of the surfaces that bounds your model, your food volume. The first thing to do is to choose the step from where to start the mesh 2D. And we have to choose the, the, the previous step, that is the geometry one. Choosing it will start the graphic window to load our model. As you can see, it is the very same model as before, but there's one important difference. In fact, if you can see, you cannot select single surfaces anymore. We have three different surfaces at the moment that are the three boundaries we just defined. You can see the name in this spot on the upper right. There is the wall, there is the outlet, and finally there is the inlet boundary. So we are ready to define our surface mesh parameters. There is just one, one single section and it presents a select where you have to select each boundary. We will start with the inlet and you will face two different settings, the mesh coarsening and the mesh size. Mesh coarsening with a uniformity level define how uniform are the triangles that will describe your surfaces. If you choose 100%, you will have uh, equal triangles on every part of your boundary. For us, 80 is a good value. So we will use 80 for every single boundary we have. And there is a very important setting that is the mesh sides. Mesh sides the mesh sides defines how small the triangles will be. And in order to choose this value, you had to take a look of your sides, of the sides of your model. We, def we decided to, that our model was in millimeters. So we have a size that now is 0 0.172 in X, and, or for example, in Z, we have 0 0.09. So nine centimeters in Z. This dimension suggests us that to use a dimension of around one millimeters, or let's say 1.5 millimeters, because we need to de describe our surface quite accurately, but we have to pay attention because if we use a too small number here, our number of triangle can become too high. So it is a matter of experience somehow, but uh, a good number can be around one hundredth of the of your greatest size. In this case, we had zero point one seven two, and we are using zero point zero zero one five. So this can be a quite a good measure. At this point, we have to do the same thing for every single boundary of course we can define a, a different value for each boundary but in our case it's okay to use the very same value for everyone at the moment we have everything set up so we can just hit submit and make our cloud computing do the work in this moment uh, mesh, mesh 2d will take around uh, one minute so it will be very very quick uh, the the volume mesh the mesh 3d that is the following step will be um, slightly longer around 2.5 minutes uh, while cfd will take 15 minutes during this maybe for for bigger meshes or for bigger simulation you can have 
computational time rising up to one day, two days, one week, maybe. In these cases, you can just log out, uh, shut down your PC and come back just when everything is finished. You don't need to, to have the application open. I mean, the progress, the process will continue even if you log out from your account. So when mesh TD will be completed, that is pretty much over, it should be ready in a few seconds, we will proceed to our volume mesh. In the volume mesh, we start, we start from the surface mesh we just created and add and the first we have to choose the algorithm on which to find the mesh. As you can see, mesh TD is complete and we can just open our case. We are in mesh 3D. First thing to do is to choose the step that we just completed, that is mesh 2D. Why we have to choose the step here? Maybe let's say that you see that your mesh 2D that you just created is not the one that you were looking for, okay? So you can just come back to mesh 2D and perform a different mesh 2D. So you will have here two different choice, choices from uh, two different run. So you have to choose which one to start from. As you can see here, we have the result of the previous step that show us how our surfaces have been triangulated. And you can see in this representation, you have the surfaces and the triangles with the edges. In case you will need to maintain the visualization of all only surfaces, you can go in the visualization menu and choose surface. This way, you have only surfaces. So now that we have our surface mesh, we can focus on the volume mesh. The volume mesh presents two algorithms for tetrahedral and hexahedral meshes. So basically, these are choices that we present the user only in the general application. For our specific sector-oriented application, we already perform the choice because usually it can be identified a particular machine algorithm that is more suitable for a sector and the other one can be the the best thing, the best choice for another sector so in the general application you have both the options and uh, for this case we will choose the tetrahedral boundary with boundary layer the the parameter here on the mesh sides defines the element sides that this time is not the surface dimension the first surface element dimension but instead this is the volume element dimension. And for this case, we can choose a 0 0.025 element size because we are around the 2.5 centimeters. So it's it can be used this, this big for our purpose. So we can just go next and we find the boundary treatment. The boundary treatment is the second section of the mesh 3D phase and it uh, pre presents a different behavior depending on the volume mesh algorithm of choice. In, uh, we will take a look at the manual to discover how it behaves but for now just maintain the boundary layer deactivated for our tetrahedral mesh. So we will leave the default values for layers, number, and first cell 
and uh, this is val valid for every single boundary we have. So we are good and we can just submit our volume mesh and that's it for the meshing phase. During computation that now will take around 2.5 minutes, more or less, I will show you how to use the manual. So here we have the manual. Scrolling down, we encounter every single step of our simulation. And uh, here there is the geometry step, mesh 2D, and finally here, mesh 3D. These images can show you and give you an idea of what means extrahedral and tetrahedral meshes. So now let's focus on the boundary treatment. In case we are dealing with tetrahedral meshes, as in this case, the boundary layer is something that can be defined as a very small cells near the surfaces. These cells are obtained with an extrusion of the triangles that define our surface in the normal direction towards the fluid and these two parameters, the wall layers number and the first cell, define the number of layers of our boundary layer and also the first cell dimension. These two parameters will allow you to add a very thin mesh near your boundaries. This layer will then be linked to the tetrahedral part of your mesh inside your volume. In the hexahedral mesh, these two parameters have a different meaning. In fact, the wall layers number define the number of cells of the same size the mesh will have before changing dimension. So as you can see here, in this image on the left side, we have a first layer of six cells, then a layer of five, and so on. So number of layers in case of hexahedral meshes uh, rules this aspect. The first cell height is something linked with the dimension of the smallest cell in your boundary. So this is the difference between the two algorithms. We can go, go back to our simulation and we will find that the mesh is ready. So we can open our case and we will be in the CFD part. Again, we choose the mesh 3D we just completed and we can open it, take a look at it. Uh, this time we will have a different window with respect to the previous one and this window will show will show up in mesh 3d to show our mesh 3d so in the cfd step and all also in result to check and perform some post-processing on our simulation so here we have our model and we can see how the mesh is completed inside we have just to click on this icon, select our file, some information here. First of all, we can notice that we have 300,000 cells for this mesh in 2.5 minutes, okay? We can easily deal with millions of cells. I mean, if you need 10 million cells, we can handle it. That's not a problem. And it's quite straightforward. You can just use the mesh sizes in order to use the proper number of cells. Then we can see here that if you want, you can take a look at the distribution of triangles as before, but also applying the filter named clip, choosing appropriately the normal we can take a look at the inside 
of our mesh to discover if the resolution we have is enough for our purpose. Choosing a representation surface with edges, we can see how the mesh is inside. So it's okay for our purpose. So now we can start focusing on the CFD setup. CFD setup that consists in three different sections. The first one is the fluid molds. In this case, we will simulate a water flow, a turbulent water flow. So, the first choice is between the type of fluid. It's, it, is it incompressible or compressible? I will choose incompressible, we have water. And the turbulence model, I will choose the spark mass. We also have two other models, K epsilon and K omega SST, as well as the laminar simulation. Uh, which is part of Maras that usually is the most uh, robust and also the most straightforward. Then we have fluid properties, density, but, uh, and the dynamic viscosity here that we will leave as default values since are already set for the water at air temperature, around room temperature. And now we have the fluid initialization that we can live again uh, with the default values, which is uh, one atmosphere as the pressure, and then the fluid is still inside the valve. This is the initialization of the turbulence variable for spinal mass. So we can proceed to the next step where we had to set the boundary condition. Here is where we tell our software uh, how to behave inside our model. We have an inlet, an outlet, and a wall, and we are ready to assign the values of our variable for each of them. First thing to set, okay, we can choose the wall. The wall is where the water stops. So we have, as a BC type, we can see here, we have two different wall conditions and the, the one of choice is no slip, so the velocity on the wall is zero. Our, the water stops on the boundaries of the wall boundaries. Then we can choose the inlet BC type, and as inlet we have three options. We will choose the velocity that will assign a velocity normal to the surface. In this case, we will choose 0 0.1 meter per second. And then we have also to set up the hydraulic diameter that is needed to set the turbulence. Usually we can take like uh, half the, the diameter of our pipe. In this case, it is around five centimeters, so we can use 2.5 centimeters. Then we can proceed with the outlet. That is the final one, and as you can see, there is only one choice here, and we have the room pressure, okay? One atmosphere. Okay, boundary conditions are set. We can proceed to the last step, that is simulation. Here we choose if we want a transient analysis with the time evolution of our flow, or a steady one. In this case, is a steady analysis. Here we set the number of maximum iterations we want and how frequently we want to save the solution. I will say here 100 iteration. So we are ready. We can now start our simulation. I just hit submit and we are ready. Okay. This process will take around 15 minutes to uh, arrived to the final result and so I can show you the very same simulation that is already completed and here it is at the end of the CFD step you have the results again you have to set up the step from where to start 
that is the CFD. And here we have the lo loading in our uh, post processing viewer. There is an important button here that is the convergence of our residuals. Just clicking on it will show you the trend of the residuals. That is a strict measure of how good is the solution. In fact, as the smaller the residuals, the higher the precision of your simulation. This smooth trend it's clearly a sign that the simulation is okay. If you find oscillation, oscillation like this in, this in the last part of your simulation, it may mean that something is wrong. At that point, you can just ask our support team to assist you, and we will be right there. So, it seems that our simulation is okay, as you can see here, you can also download results to post-process in uh, your own PC with, uh, for example, Paraview. That is a common uh, data analysis tool, scientific data analysis tool that is free and it's very powerful. What we are providing you here is the web version of Paraview. It's quite complete too but obviously it lacks in something, so you should need the download result. And uh, this is a feature that is available only for a uh, paying user, but it's the only one. So we, are, we have here the result and we can start to post-process it, for example, I will show you the pressure distribution, the pressure contour here. But the, the first thing I have to do is to go to the last simulation step. And as you can see, here we have our pressure distribution. Remember, the flow enters here and exits here. So there is a pressure drop between the two parts that is clear. We can just start to analyze a little bit more our solution and let's say we want to, upload, to see the inside of our valve. So here with the plus button we can apply a clip again choosing the, the right normal of our clip that is in the Z direction. We can see for example the velocity inside of our valve. And let's say this is what it this is the, the velocity. It enters in the inlet and then interacts with the structure of our valve and then goes out to the outlet. This is one of the many possibility we have to analyze our post-processing results and this is just one of them. Another interesting post-processing tool is the stream tracer. It shows you how our particle behave in our valve. For example, this one. We have to choose the vectors to integrate to define our trajectories, that is the velocity, here we define the length of our maximum stream line. Here we define the point source where to start our stream lines. A good point for us, it's strictly linked to the geometry and this, in this case, these coordinates are okay. We define the number of particles we want to tra track and the radius. So we also uh, color it by pressure, then we click apply and you will see here, okay, this is our particle stream tracer. And you will see our, our particle, our fluid enters here, interacts with the, the valve and then goes out to the outlet in this position and you can see the color is related to the pressure, it enters at a high pressure and then it drops down 
due to interaction with the valve. So this is uh, an example of what you can do with the post-processor. There are a lot of things you can do. As you can see, there are many filters here you can use. And uh, a lot of uh, additional things are available with the local uh, Paraview application. In fact, you can perform, let's say, integration to obtain the mass flow rate, pressure loads, and something like that and uh, you can also take uh, the velocity profile graph in order to see how the geometry shape of your valve influences the output of, this, of the system these are just examples and uh, there are a lot of them now i would want to show you a few things more about what you can do with our platform one thing is the particle with flow, I'm sorry, the flow with particles and the interaction of particles with our walls. There is a, a nice article in our blog about that. You can just go to our website and then go to the blog where you can find a lot of interesting articles that show you how um, new features are implemented and a new kind of analysis you can have. As you can see here, CFD valve erosion article. Okay, There is a small video, a very small video of a simulation showing a flow with particle entering your domain, interacting with the boundaries, and we will see eroding few millimeters of material in this part. The video is very short, and as you can see here, is the flow with the valve that interact with the boundary, and I will show it again. As you can see, okay, here there is the interaction that the most, the, the, the very peak uh, part where uh, there are a lot of impacts, particles with the boundary, and now I will show you how you can see with Paraview what this means for your structure. Here, this is Paraview on my PC. And there is, as you can see, there is the, our pipe and there are a lot of particles in it. We can just eliminate the particles and take a look. This is a measure of erosion of our pipe. As you can see here, once you assign the particle density, the particles properties, and your material properties, this is a, a contour showing you the amount of material that is lost due, due to these impacts. And finally, I want to give you another preview that is uh, one of our res recent feature that will be online starting next week, and is the structural analysis tool. I took the very same valve and assigned a differential pressure of three atmospheres. So as you can see here, I uploaded, in this case, the valve structure, not the fluid volume anymore, because now we are not dealing with the fluid, now we are dealing with the structure. So for this simulation, I used the structure, I applied a pressure inside the valve, and I fixed it, I constrained it with these holes. And this is the result where you can see the stresses in our body, the distribution, and so it gives you an idea on how stressed is your material. But take a look at, this, at the legend here. As you can see, the highest value is around 1 times 10 power 6. This is 
very low a very low value if compared with the uh, material resistance that is around three times ten power eight. In fact, if you reset the scale, you will see your there are no stress that are problematic for our structure. So in this case, we can say the design is okay and we don't have to worry about our golf. So basically, that's it for uh, our presentation. And I just want you to give, to give you the opportunity to have the question and answer time. If you want, you can just click on the question and answer button and uh, ask anything you may need. And uh, I will try to ask all your question. And uh, okay, I can give you in the meantime a uh, few few information about, for example, our welcome plan. You can check out it today, and it will give you an amount of credits that, that will allow you to perform simulation every month. It's uh, automatically renewed for free every month. And in case you need further assistance, you can write us to our uh, email address info at concept.com and uh, we can also provide you information additional information about our prices our plans our solution that are can be arranged in different fashion depending on your needs and your support and uh, also on depending on the, the storage you need and the computational power. So uh, we are very flexible. We are uh, available for uh, different solution also in the computing cloud infrastructure. So if there are uh, no question, remember we will uh, put this uh, webinar on YouTube very soon, later today. And uh, in case you need any additional information, write us. We will answer in 24 hours. So thank you all for your uh, support and follow us on our LinkedIn page. There you can find a lot of updates and new feature we will add uh, in a fast pace to our platform. Thank you and have a good day.